Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things, and I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. Welcome to Postmortem Day 2. To edit or not to edit? That is the question. And how to do it? This is one I've gotten a lot of emails on since day one. The premise of this podcast is pretty audacious if you start to think about it in terms of how much editing time you've got. Because most beginning writers expect to spend X amount of time creating and Y amount of time refining, meaning going back through the manuscript, polishing it up, fixing all the little problems, doing continuity, doing character consistency, fixing all the little problems, fixing all the typos, and then going back through and doing it all again, finding ways to make the language really jump out. Sort of like writing in layers, right? You write the story first, and then you fine-tune the structure, and then you fine-tune the veneer, which is the actual presentation. That style of writing is a very, very good way to never have a career for a few different reasons. The most obvious, and the one that nobody believes until they've been through it a few times, assuming they stick to it, and I'm no exception to this, I killed a few books this way, is that most of the time, your first draft is your best one. I know, I know, I know it sounds crazy, but there's a reason for that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the best you could possibly do in all ways. You may not be that good yet, and that's okay. But if you stuck through and wrote that story honestly and poured your self-conscious out on the paper, it's the best you can do. It really, really, truly is. Nothing you can do in revisions is going to make the story better. You might be able to fix continuity problems. They're worth taking a look at. You definitely can fix typos. They're seriously worth taking a look at. But in terms of tweaking the language, and tweaking the story, and tweaking the presentation, you've done the best you can do. And if you haven't, what the hell were you doing for the last 30 days? If you think it sucks, and hey, it might. We all write turkeys from time to time, and the turkeys tend to be front-loaded in the career while we're still getting our practice. But if what you did was not the best you can do, what the hell were you doing? You need to pour your story out, you do the best you can, and then you have to let it go. The reason you have to let it go is that the parts of you that are going to go back and look at that story and try to polish it up and make it gorgeous are not the parts of you that know how to tell a story. It's a whole different neurological subsystem. And the parts of you that are going to go back and look at it are going to find it kind of pedestrian and kind of boring because you're reading something that's written in a voice and with concerns and everything that you hear every single day inside your head. Just like, no matter how gorgeous your speaking voice is, you probably think it sounds like crap. No matter how gorgeous your writing voice is, most of the time, for most people, you're gonna think it sounds like crap. And it's not just you. I know multiple category award-winning, long-term best-selling authors who, no matter how good it is, no matter how many awards it's won, they can't stand to read their own stuff. If you can stand to read your own stuff and you really like it, there is probably a problem with your brain. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but you may have some wiring issues. And don't go to therapy for them. You can't fix them with therapy. They're wiring issues. They're congenital. The reason that we go back and revise, the reason that we're taught to do that pathologically, is that when we learn in school how to write, we learn how to write rhetoric. We learn how to write essays, arguments, and reports. And essays, arguments, and reports are a critical exercise. They're about making points, they're about structured logic, they're about structured argumentation. And that kind of writing you really can improve if you go back and give it a critical pass. Fiction and poetry, you really can't. And music, you usually can't either. Because these things are things that proceed from 
the subconscious synthesis of thoughts, ideas, feelings, both emotional and visceral, prejudices, philosophies, memories, this boiling morass of stuff in your subconscious that your brain synthesizes just the same way it synthesizes dreams. And remember, if you've read any of my blog posts, or you've heard me on Apologia, or you've read any of my essays or articles, you know this is coming from someone who is a hardcore rationalist. So, I'm not taking it lightly when I say, the things that go into making fiction are things that are not amenable to rational deconstruction. Deconstruction is something for literary scholars, it's not something for writers. And it will kill your writing voice if you try to do that, as I have ten years of my career where I could write nothing but nonfiction and have it work to testify to that fact. Oh, I wrote fiction, but I never finished any of it because I was too much in my own way and too much in my own head. So, all of that may be well and good, but you've got this manuscript, and you need to get it to market. Some of you may be wanting to go to a big publishing house with it. Some of you may want to self-publish. Some of you may want to go some kind of in-between route or try traditional first and then self-publish if it doesn't sell. But one way or the other, you have to get it to market. If you don't get it to market, you're a hobbyist. And there's nothing wrong with being a hobbyist, but this is a podcast designed for people who are professionals or aspiring professionals. So here's what you need to do. Hand your manuscript off to a trusted beta reader or team of beta readers, and ask them the following questions. Please put a comment in the margin if I lose you. Generally, this does the story work question is something you only want to give to one person whose taste you understand and who you know very well, because you'll be able to figure out easily if you actually broke something in the story or if you just lost them because of the subject matter. Number two... Please flag any typos using track changes, and let them edit to their heart's content, typos only, and tell them do not fix the grammar in the dialogue. I also tell them don't fix the grammar in the narrative, but I write very voicey stuff, and some people, particularly beginning writers, are really wedded to good grammar. It's not applicable in fiction, but if you need to do that, go ahead and do that. But what I tell my proofreaders is flag all the typos, do not fix the grammar. Unless it's confusing, then flag it with a margin note. The third thing, please flag with a margin note any continuity errors or changed premises that jolt you out of the story. And when you're done with that, send me the manuscript. Sometimes also, if you're writing science fiction or something that depends heavily on realism, you may also want to send it to a technical or scientific expert. Then you get the manuscript back, or the manuscripts, and you sit down, and if you've got multiple manuscripts, you merge them into one, and if you've just got the one, you go through it. And you go through and you decide which changes you want to pay attention to. This is your book. This is your voice. You do not want to let someone else rewrite your book, even if it will piss them off. And I've actually been on both ends of that equation. I've had people try to rewrite me. It drove me nuts. And I've had a couple of occasions where I got carried enough away as a beta reader that I tried to rewrite people, and it pissed them off. And they ignored it, and that pissed me off. And, you know, we're adults. We get past these things. But it happens both ways. Accept the changes, or implement them only if you agree. And then, once that's done, either format your manuscript for submission and send it to an editor, because an agent can't write you a check, and no matter what anyone tells you, every single editor accepts unagented submissions, and you should never send a manuscript to someone who can't write you a check. Even if you decide for other reasons that you want an agent later, send your manuscripts direct to editors who can acquire them. Or format it as an EPUB and format it for paperback, and put it up in all of the markets you've got access to. In the process, of course, you'll need to acquire or design some cover art and some cover typography, and that's a whole other skill set that's worth learning, but does take a while. Either way, get this manuscript turned into a book and up for sale, and then let it go. Don't look back. Don't go back and retouch it later on. You've finished this part of your career. It's time to move on to the next one. If you don't, you're going to get lost at one point or another, 
in what happened to George Lucas and how he started going back and retouching Star Wars and retouching Star Wars and one of the most gifted storytellers and producers, because those were his brilliant points, one of the most gifted storytellers and producers in the history of the movies went from producing interesting new stuff that sometimes was massively successful and sometimes was an interesting failure to doing the same thing over and over and every time he did it, he made it worse. If you ever want to understand why people like me and other people you'll read about online get so into not revising, all you have to do is look at what happened every single time George Lucas re-released Star Wars. Every time it got worse, it worked less well, and it robbed us of years of creativity from someone who should have been telling us new and more interesting stories. And that's what happens. He thought and thinks that each successive iteration was better than the last. The audience disagreed. And once you release your story, the audience is what matters. Don't go back and do the special edition. Resist the temptation. Don't go back and rewrite stuff that you've already released. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at NaNoWriMoEveryMonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar to support this podcast. NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2015 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License.